In this tutorial, we will be making a small interactive game help us to learn the concept of spring joints and ray cast. At the end of this tutorial, we will be able to click on the screen to destroy a stack of cubes. These cubes are connected to each other by physical spring joints so they don't fall down easily. First of all, we will make an empty game object and C-sharp script both called spring wall and then another set called player. This player will behave as a shooter later. Firstly, in the spring wall script, create a few parameters as such. Then we need a three-dimensional array to store all the bricks in order so we can use it to connect spring later. We will make the create tower function separately so we can call this function multiple times later using a button control. Inside this create tower function, create a three layer nested loop. We will use i to determine the x coordinate, k to determine the y coordinate, and j to determine the z coordinate. We are creating position and rotation information in order to instantiate the prefab geometry.
and then we are feeding the newly created object to the three-dimensional array. Now when we play, the script had one error message because I made a mistake flipping the depth and roll number on line 19. It should match the order as on line 36. IKJ as XYZ dimension. And next we are using a simple ongoing method to create a simple button. We want to use this to refresh the game later. So this button is creating new towers every time we click, but it's not very visible. So let's add a rigid body to visualize what's happening. Obviously, it's adding more towers, but not deleting the previous ones. So let's fix this issue. We need to clear all the previously created instances before creating a new tower. For this, we are going to make a new one-dimensional array list and store all the instances and then loop through all of them and destroy them and clear the list. Please note that on line 49, we are adding all the instances to this one-dimensional array. I somehow missed this part in this video. We are also going to add a line of code to differentiate the material color per Y layer.
Now the game works great, but the bricks are only rigid body has no relationship to each other. So we are going to add spring connections. So for this, um, this is also the main reason why we had to make three-dimensional array. This line of code shows you how to connect spring to their neighbor. After we code for the I row, you will see that the connections are done as a chain. This line of code shows you how to create spring connections to the neighboring bricks. After coding for the I row, you will see that the bricks are connected like a chain. As I said before, they are now connected as a one-dimensional chain. So we'll do the same for J dimension. And after these few lines of code, each layer of bricks will be connected as a fabric. Now you can see that each layer is connected as a two-dimensional fabric. So same principle for K dimension. Once it's connected, the entire tower will be connected to each other as a whole. So now the spring wall is ready and we can switch to the player script. So the player script is quite straightforward. This is the simplest example showing how to use a mouse click to interact with your 3D virtual world. This is done using Raycast. Raycast is a method to detect what you are clicking by shooting a ray from your mouse position through a camera screen and return you the hit geometry, hit position, and hit vector. 
In this example, we are going to use the heat vector to add pushing forces to the tower. So when you click on the brick, each brick can get pushed. And at the end, we are going to add a line of destroy command to destroy the cubes. All right, the game works. That's the end of this tutorial. We covered how to create a multi-dimensional list, how to connect spring connection, how to use Raycast, and we also tried using ongoing method for script-controlled UI.